Hello, sir. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, start it. I guess you know they joined. करना था उन्होंने कर लिया. So uh, before we begin this, I would like my colleague Abu Bakr, who is a fourth year medical student, to give you an idea about what we are trying to do and what we have made in Pakistan. So Abu Bakr, over to you. Hello everyone. My name is Abu Bakr Yaqub. I am a fourth year medical student at King Edward Medical University, Lahore. Um, on behalf of Kim Saik, I would like to warm heartily welcome you all. Uh, I am privileged to give an introduction to Kim Saik uh, in front of our participants who have joined us today, and our guest speaker, Dr. Bhaskar Mukherjee. I'll throw a bit of light on the history of events that ultimately led to foundation of Kim Saik. So last year, in the first two weeks of September, around 14 students of King Edward Medical University and one student of Khwaja Sadr Medical College decided to take part in an internship program organized by psychiatry department of Mayo Hospital, Lahore. So the purpose of it was to explore the field of psychiatry um, for those who had joined the psychiatry ward in their respective third years of MBBS here at King Edward Medical University, and to also to introduce this field to the students who hadn't been able to attend their wards due to Corona pandemic and lockdown situation that was going on last year. So during the session, um, lectures were delivered on psychiatric illnesses, uh, patients were examined and discussed, research papers were also presented and table discussions were held on those research papers. And when the internship was over, we, along with our mentors, directly felt the need for establishing some means to hold these type of co-curricular activities more often. Admitting the fact that psychiatry and behavioral sciences is just a minor portion of our curriculum of MBBS, we decided with the help of our seniors and mentors to form a psychiatry interest group for the keen and inquisitive minds, not only of King Edward Medical University, but for all the medical colleges and universities inside or outside of Pakistan and to bridge the gap. Uh, the purpose was to provide us all a platform where together we can teach and learn this fascinating subject that is psychiatry. Now back over to Yosha Bhai, who will start our session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abu Bakr, for introducing us. So before I introduce Sir Bhaskar, I would like to thank you him for the last one year, just my messages be kartara, and he has been very kind enough to answer my queries and uh, issues related to psychiatry. I guess I could relate to him when it came to the point uh, that you thought psychiatry science se zyada a humanities ka subject hai. when you can choose a mirror up personal interest in neuroscience with and I wanted to learn more about it so I needed someone who could actually guide me who could actually throw a little light on it and I out of nowhere I came uh, I, I got added by my one of my mentors in a CME group on telegram or uske baad, I got uh, into WhatsApp and whatnot so they have been conducting uh, Thursday musings for the last one year, just may they invite people from everywhere. Uh, they invited a professor from France, from India, and they were, they are doing, they are still doing it. And they are doing this wonderful thing. So I want to introduce Sir Bhaskar. Sir Bhaskar is right now a consultant psychiatrist, a teacher, an academic person, as well as a neuroscientist in Kolkata. And before, because Sir, ko, sir ko tha ke, should I introduce your, kis introduce karu? And he said, uh, introduce me as someone who likes to introduce himself. So, sir, kindly introduce yourself, please, to our participants today. Uh, I guess sir, you mute, Mike. Uh, I, I was muted. Actually, hello everyone, and hello my kids from Pakistan. The thing is, I do like to introduce myself because 
I don't like people telling me, telling about me that he is attached to this medical college. He has, he is doing this research. No, that is not me. That is someone who wants to show his academic mind. I am just a fellow student. I don't have any academic mind. I am just like all of you, trying to understand psychiatry, trying to understand the biggest branch of medicine, psychiatry. Yes, you would say, biggest, itna sara, itna chota sa branch hai, kuch bhi nahi hai, thora sa behavior hai. How it can, the, how it can be the biggest? Actually, the thing is, psychiatry is that branch of medicine that deals with brain and brain is the master organ of human body. If I say very crudely, then ek chota sa brain hai, two eyeballs are coming out of it, a spinal cord is descending from the brain and a few nerve ending. That is what we are. We humanity are actually this thing. Rest of the body is the vehicle of this structure and this structure is us. That is why we can replace every organ of body. But no part of this organ, be it eyeball, be it brain, brain areas, be it spinal cord can be replaced as of now. Because we, if you replace these, these things, the whole person will change. That's why psychiatry be dealing with brain becomes the biggest branch of medical science. It has extension in every medical branch, be it cardiology, be it nephrology, be it gastroenterology. You would ask me how. There is a sub-branch in cardiology, which is known as behavioral cardiology. Behavioral cardiology is nothing but how autonomic nervous system and immune system and endocrine system controls various conditions of heart based on various brain states. So you see, it becomes psychiatry. Then neurogastroenterology, again, a super specialty branch of gastroenterology, which deals with brain and GI system. Behavioral endocrinology, behavioral nephrology, every part of psychiatry that is into this specialties are being produced as a separate discipline. But in truth, these are all psychiatry. So ultimately psychiatry becomes the biggest medical branch. And like all of you who are wanting to do psychiatry and who are doing psychiatry, I'm also a student of this wonderful subject. Along with that, I am also a devotee of brain. I love brain. That's the only thing I understand. And that's the only thing I love passionately. So this is what I am. Nothing more, nothing less. And do not add sad before me. I am not yet knighted and I don't ever expect to be knighted. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bhaskar for this lovely introduction. So before we begin, can you take us back to your medical school life? Like how kind, what kind of a medical student was, were you? And how did you come in contact with psychiatry during your undergraduate years? Yes, this would be a shocking question for most, uh, shocking answer for most of you. Because at present, most of the people all over India and world knows me as someone who fights for psychiatry, as biological science and who loves psychiatry. But when my journey started, it was not like that. Mm, let me go back to a bit further than my college, then you would understand. Actually, now I am speaking very freely. I am connecting with everyone. But in my school days, I was a very prototype any RD, not you can call you can easily call me that at present i am a very sociable nut at that point i was a very unsocial nut so nobody i uh, i had no friends in school days and 
everything I wanted to do is I don't want it to read any of the usual academic books because they used to bore me. So after joining MBBS by just chance, because I gave the medical entrance, but I was more interested in doing genetics. But due to family pressure, I gave the medical entrance. After joining MBBS, I realized that this is the first time in my life I have found something which I like. All the subjects of past professional MBBS, be it anatomy, be it physiology, be it biochemistry, they look like long lost relatives. They were something I could understand. I never could understand most of my school subjects, but for medical subjects, they were super easy and super interesting. So I started them. I, there was not a single subject in my whole MBBS career, which was uninteresting. Yes, FSM was a bit boring. The laws were uh, drag, but that's okay. Otherwise, the toxicology was interesting. Even the deduction was interesting. Yeah. So I loved all ah. the MBBS. Hmm. Then what happened is due to this love and natural interest, I did a good academic performance. And being a nerd, like most other unsocial nerds, I also became a bit egoist and arrogant. So what happened is I wanted to do medicine in AIMS only. No other place would satisfy as a training institute and as a subject. Uh, my first exposure to AIMS entrance was not bad. I did, uh, I uh, secured a good rank, but not good enough for medicine. It was good enough for psychiatry, but Pagaloka subject con leta. I was never interested. <laughs> then came PGI entrance. Same thing happened. I was qualifying for psychiatry, but I was not qualifying for medicine. Then come an uh, All India exam. All India entrance exam is a whole uh, India encompassing PG entrance where PGs from uh, UGs from all over India compete. And actually, they try for roughly 700 seats of post graduation. Now the seats are much more, but when my time in 2003, 2004, it was just 700. So I gave the All India entrance. Here, uh, the good colleges of medicine was available, but not the best ones. And so I opted for psychiatry. Chota sa subject hai, kya jayega? Palenge, uske baad, ek saal baad, exam aega, isse de denge. After entering psychiatry, it was a shock of a life. Ye kya ho raha hai? Main kaha aagaya hoon? The whole thing is, main aagaya, mujhe ek psychology ka book mere professor ne de diya. Isko paro. Every page was a torture. No meaning, no logical conclusion, no scientific expression, just rote memory. All you need to succeed in psychology is rote memory. Couldn't stand it. I tried to do a lot of things. I tried to fight with my professor. I tried to do a lot of seminars, which showed that psychiatry is actually part of basic brain biology, but they didn't agree. And somehow this made me furious that they don't understand. So let's make them understand. And that actually started the affair of mine with psychiatry. First, it was, hey, yellow, this is not psychiatry. There has to be something. I am a physician. I cannot do this type of psychiatry. Then I started understanding brain. And over next few years, for my till my junior residency and senior residency, I tried to read as, as much neurology as possible. 
as much neuroscience as possible and slowly brain started to entice me and psychiatry has become a love affair jahan pe mujhe kidnap karke laya gaya and i fall into a stockholm syndrome stockholm syndrome doesn't exist that's a psychology term that has no real world correlate but for giving example this is a stockholm syndrome psychiatry kidnapped me and i started loving it slowly i understood that everything is brain brain controls whole body parts brain has multiple level of expression what we think is cognitive expression of brain what we feel is emotional expression of brain what we sense is sensory expression of brain what we do is motor expression of brain and when we do things coordinately and when we go through all the cycle coordinately that becomes behavior and behavior is another expression of brain so ultimately brain has five layer of expression and we just have done a great disservice to brain by dividing um, the motor component and sensory component into neurology and the other components in psychiatry and since then yeah. it has become yeah. my so yes yeah so continue sir yes sir it's okay it happens in zoom meeting this type of things happen since then it has become my goal of life you can say or my quest to find myself that i want to join the two sides of clinical neuroscience psychiatry and neurology and i want to make psychiatry regain its whole place the place of clinical neuroscience that's it nothing very special just a person who was nobody then became somebody and then again nobody and trying to become he is trying to make his subject something now thank you so much dr bhaskar for taking us through all these years uh, you are very right because if i remember if i go back in time i guess in the start of the 9 uh, 20th century or in at the end of the uh, 19th century most of the people who were psychiatrists were also neurologists in fact there was not a term like psychiatrist at that time most of the people were neurologists yes so uh, in your opinion right now uh, definitely you would have received a lot of traction a lot of resistance because of your views because uh, people are not yet ready especially in our country where we don't have those means to study brain those means to uh, practice neuroscience uh, would you like to share your experience what kind of resistance have you faced or uh, have you been able to make something out of it the thing is one thing you have mistaken is that the resistance is in our country no it's not in our country now i communicate with people from all over the world and ironically the usa health system uk health system these are the two health system which are most resistant to change india pakistan and the bhutan sri lanka other south east asian country they are not that hard to change psychiatrists here initially they resist but then they listen when you show them that this is the evidence this is how brain controls the whole body this is how these things are happening when you start explaining to people from southeast asia or china or japan that how brain controls body how psychiatric symptoms are produced they are actually ready to listen initially i had a lot of problem initially i was marginalized i was ostracized i had i ne- even nobody used to call me to any conference so that i corrupt other people i don't get so that i don't corrupt anyone uh, i was like a cancer or we can say plague for them but the views in southeast asia has changed i am seeing the change but uk system and us system they are not ready to listen for them it's sale 
psychology it's still psycho uh, analysis they are more comfortable as those rather than a pure neuroscientist because at the end of the day every one who is pursuing psychiatry who is under no, who is working as a psychiatrist is a clinical neuroscientist but in usa and uk the gap between the basic neuroscience and psychiatrist are huge in india in pakistan i have many friends in pakistan in sri lanka japan the gap is getting narrowed the basic neuroscience and clinical applied neuroscience are communicating but the other areas they are not doing that yes another one the scandinavian countries they are also in the same category of usa and uk at the rest of the world are changing i am seeing the change i am yes i frequently get get angry that these people don't change nothing would happen but when i get come when i understand that how far we have come from 2014 when i first came to uh, national level of indian psychiatry to 2021 it's a hell lot of change today people i work in bengal bengal is in eastern india now today people from remotest past of western india northern india southern india north east uh, uh, from there they actually contact me with the, for their patients they communicate with me and they want to know what is happening wrong with their patient might be they are missing something if there is anything that can be done by seeing their presence from brain point of view people have started accepting it would take a long your generation would probably see the change but the wheels have started rolling wheels have started rolling thank you so much dr bhaskar dr bhaskar uh, right now uh, the participants we have most of them are medical students most of them are in third year of their medical students uh, most of them have their first contact with psychiatry during the webinar we have been conducting for the last two weeks with the name of juice psychiatry they have heard a lot of psychiatrists so would you like to tell them uh, what is difference between uh, the psychiatry the mainstream psychiatry and the uh, maybe the other side which is based more on the evidence and more on the neuroscience so uh, how can you differentiate the both maybe you can give a snapshot to them mm. Arden, can you explain more what you what you are asking? You are asking me to differentiate between the medical psychiatry to what goes in the name of, name of psychiatry, right? Yeah, exactly. What uh, what uh, when you are talking about change, when you are talking about neuroscience, like you have discussed in groups as well, uh, what kind of change do you want to see? And uh, in your opinion, or maybe in the opinion of most of the neuroscientists and uh, neuropsychiatrists. what is happening wrong the wrong thing that is happening is at mbbs level and at basic medical graduation level we people have forgotten that you are the basic base the structure basic structure of medical education start at graduation level so we need to train the graduates more about psychiatry we need to teach them psychiatry because when they are going to pass out as medical graduate 70% of the patient they are going to see in whatever stream would have psychiatric symptoms as they are one of the presenting features so there is no way for them to escape psychiatry and what we are doing we are not teaching them psychiatry we are not teaching them how to understand things from brain's point of view from first year mbbs we should start teaching them there is a neuroanatomy the neuroanatomy part is the most neglected part of anatomy teaching just two or three lectures is spared for neuroanatomy and this was the uh, uh, actually the feature when i did my mbbs in 1997 uh, in 1997 to 2003 and the same thing is happening today you people also 
are getting two to three lectures on neuroanatomy, nothing more. Neuroanatomy is the essence of anatomy. We should mo stress more uh, on these things. Then from second professional onwards, we should start integrated teaching. Means, let's say we should take a patient and bring the patient to a pharmacology or physio or pathology classroom and say that this patient has, let's say this patient has these clinical features. These are produced due to this, 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 and this change, these pathological changes in brain. This, this, this drug affects these pathological changes and would cause this symptom to change that way. That would make you understand how clinically your knowledge can be implemented. We are doing it wrong. We are making it a direct teaching. No medical teaching should be direct. We are doing it wrong, but I don't know how we can make it right because I am just a single person, a single student of science. I don't know how we can change it, but we need to change it. Thank you, Dr. Bhaskar. Dr. Bhaskar, uh, like uh, you, a lot of psychiatrists that I have met, uh, they are not very keen on understanding neuroscience. They are more keen on the social aspects. They are more keen on the maybe therapy aspects. And uh, most of them really don't understand even how does an antidepressant work. All they know that these are the guidelines and these are the guidelines we should follow. So uh, in your opinion, uh, did it help you clinically? Did it help yes. you uh, in making patients better in a good way? Actually, patients are the most benefited part of neuroscience-based psychiatry or scientific psychiatry or medical psychiatry. Because when you see a patient through eyes of brain, you would understand there is no depression. There is no disease known as anxiety. There is no disease known as schizophrenia. These are just symptoms. Whole of psychiatric nomenclature is just first chapter of Harrison. I hope some of you have started Harrison. Harrison, in Harrison, there is a first, the first chapter is known as signs and symptoms of disease. It deals with various symptoms of various diseases. There is a chapter called fever. There is a chapter called diarrhea. There is a chapter called headache. And then they, those, that, that specific chapter deals with pathophysiology of those symptoms and things like that. The whole of psychiatry is the first chapter. We have to go on beyond the first chapter. Once you see through brain, you, are, you would understand that. Then it is easy for you to give drugs because let's say antidepressant. Antidepressant doesn't work in depression because depression is not a, uh, a disease. It's just a symptom. So our we are feeling low because our brain is not able to handle the functional demand that is being placed on brain either by our internal environment or by our external environment so what do we need to do we need to increase the function of brain that is what antidepressants does by by which mechanism by number one temporary neurotransmitter mechanism followed by long-term molecular mechanism. What is temporary neurotransmitter-based mechanism? Within 30 minutes of ingestion, these antidepressants start changing brain neurotransmitter level. But brain is a very tightly regulated organ. Whenever you increase any neurotransmitter in brain, the production would reduce, as well as the complementary neurotransmitter would reduce. For example, you increase excited neurotransmitter. So that is an excited neurotransmitter production would reduce as well as the inhibitory ones would increase. And ultimately the neurotransmitter change would be abolished within two to three weeks. But by that time, the antidepressants would start acting on other receptors, which we are just finding. SSRI, SNRI, they all act on various neuropeptide receptor various immunokine receptor means let's say say interleukin 2 uh, tnf alpha all these their neurotransmitter all their receptors are also activated by antidepressants along with that antidepressants also change a lot of intercellular signal transaction pathway and ultimately 
brain cells start dividing in proliferation zone those new cells uh, gets matured and they migrate to various brain areas which are suffering from hyperactivity and they form new trans uh, new synapse there ultimately there is huge neuroplasticity and brain remodelization and that's how ultimately the brain function is increased and the low feeling gets reduced that's how the new antidepressants work and if we understand that then we would have no problem in treating the negative symptoms of schizophrenia because negative symptoms of schizophrenia are just this thing uh, happening from some other way so let's give antidepression to them no guideline talks about these things because guideline in psychiatry are not data driven all over the world in every subject the guidelines are data driven we see a group of patient we see their outcomes and we list that as various steps of management in psychiatry a few influential people come together they are regarded as expert and they give their expert opinion and expert opinion is published as consensus guideline this is not data based data driven guideline this is not evidence based guideline this is actually eminence based guideline in the grab of evidence based guideline that's why in psychiatry guidelines fail but in medicine in critical care guidelines are the mainstay of treatment that is why we need to change thank you dr bhaskar for delineating it in detail uh thoda sa agar main isko is tarah lu ke definitely the way uh, you see psychiatry is a very beautiful way and i see it the same way and i have been seeing it for the last couple of years like in most of the people who join psychiatry or who want to join psychiatry uh they see it as some field which is not that medical or yes. a field which is like they would do because they are not interested in medicine or surgery or maybe in other fields or at times they feel it closer to art or humanities or maybe psychology or or philosophy or things like that uh, would you like to comment on these kind of things uh, what what how do you suggest to students who are not that uh, who are perceiving psychiatry through this field uh, is is it a right way a wrong way or maybe they should uh, look beyond the things uh, so here i would just narrate you my experience when i started mai directly bol deta tha sala arts graduate mein dimag kharab kar rakha hai these people who are actually humanities people they flock to psychiatry because they were pressurized into doing medicine and they didn't like medicine so psychiatry became a sort of refuge for them they paid for the mistake psychiatry paid for the mistake but then a lot of things change uh the oh, this attitude of mine was in 2012 13 then i slowly understood that i can retrain these people if uh, these people who came here because this is a less less medical stream this is more close to humanity these are actually passionate people so if we can show them the reason if we can show that there is another way of thinking which won't disturb their passion but would help them in understanding this subject better and doing this subject better they would take it because passionate people don't like to lie to themselves they are here they are doing this subject they are they don't like the way the, the the things are going they love to do humanities but they are not doing it so they would actually either help in making psychiatry scientific if we show the way or they would not obstruct over uh, the period of last 5 or 6 years i have seen a big, a lot of this type of people they have started asking questions from molecular genetics they have started asking me 
what are some of the books that to help us understand molecular psychiatry see and please give us give, give us easy books because we don't know molecular science that much and these are the people who are the honest one so initially i would say no these are the bad people like now i have started feeling that yes these people can be can be trained they want to change and if given a chance some of them would join as our greatest talent Thank you so much, Dr. Bhaskar. Dr. Bhaskar, I was reading a book like a couple of months ago, and they said that psychiatry के अंदर एक बहुत मसला है कि इसके अंदर ना लोग बहुत जल्दी dogmatic beliefs बना लेते हैं मतलब कि शुरू से ये एक मसला रहा है पहले शायद में भी for forty to fifty years we have been totally like uh, American psychiatry जो थी उससे पीछे अगर हम चाहें तो preplan वगैरह के अगर हम चीजें देखें तो they were very based on mind or sorry on brain. लेकिन जैसे जैसे आगे चीजें चलती रही सिगमेंट फ्राइड और दूसरे साइको एनालिस्ट आते रहे थिंग्स कोई बहुत ही दूसरी तरफ पे जाना शुरू हो गई और उसके साथ आई गेस आहिस्ता आहिस्ता जो साइको एनालिस्ट से यूएस की साइकाइट्री और यूके की साइकाइट्री पीछे हटना शुरू हुई इट्स लाइक ट्वेंटी ईयर्स और नाउ आई सी इट यूएस के अंदर भी दे हैव बीन ट्रेनिंग उनका न्यूरो साइंटिफिक मॉड्यूल कंपल्सरी पार्ट हो गया साइकाइट्री की ट्रेनिंग का एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट तो वुड यू लाइक टू कमेंट ऑन दिस एस्पेक्ट कि आपकी नजर में ये जो साइकाइट्री एक ब्रेन बेस्ड जो कि चल रहा था काम उससे निकल के एकदम एक ऐसी चीज में चली गई जिसके अंदर बहुत ज्यादा सूडो साइंस इन्वॉल्व हो गई ये कैसे हुआ और क्या ये आगे भी हो सकता है इट वुड हैपन एज लॉन्ग एज वी डोंट गेट the sophisticated technology which would let us see real time human brain cell and its functioning so jab tak hum log wo scientific wo technology na pa le ye beech beech mein pseudo science would take a dig at psychiatry why for that we have to go back more a few millennia more let me clarify uh the concept of mind has originated in shamanistic era of medicine shamanistic era means let's say 50000 or uh, uh, 1 million year ago that type of medicine that was being practiced all over the world there was a shaman of shaman or medicine man in every tribe and they used to treat the patients now they were trying to explain human body function some of the if you uh, are interested in uh, anthropology and the paleontology you find that in history we have find many a time skulls with bones as well as human body parts have been clear mark of dissection because at that time they wanted to know how human body work but they had no way of knowing how what brain does and how brain functions so they could discover other parts of body but for brain they didn't know anything so to explain behavior they coined the mind and the things like that then these shamanistic people they changed into four profession four profession is one profession they continued as, as zilas and we are their descendants then there is a group of shamans who go went into esoteric metaphysics and ultimately they become the religious people the religious and spiritual people a group of shaman went into sociology humanities arts and various other things and ultimately they are the philosophers as well as sociologists psychologists of today then the last group the last group went into arbitration social arbitration then legality and ultimately the legal profession originated from it and each of these group actually added one dimension to mind initially it was just expression of brain function then religious group added they are religious angle 
the sociologist and humanities group at their humanities angle then legal group at their total legal angle so ultimately mind became a multifaceted thing then this was going on for a long time greco roman philosophers and uh, healers they tried to disengage this entangle then in our subcontinent from your area to surat from my area jibak and from southern parts of indian subcontinent charak these three people has tried to disentangle it again did they tried it and failed then this jumbled up was going on till there is rene descartes rene descartes found that it is impossible to diminish religious influence so what he did he actually proposed a duality body is different mind is different mind is part of church religion let uh, church take the mind and leave body for science this was the first mistake he did a very good thing for science that time but he gave pseudo science the whole of mind and we are actually regarding the pattern every time uh, let's say this mind brain and body this joining was due to happen in 18 late, late, last part of 17th century around say 1850 60 at that time there was a french neurologist who was the father of neurology i forgot his name Uh, can you um, please make me remember he is known as father of neurology and he is also he was also interested in hypnosis freud was one of his early students um sorry i don't remember i don't i cannot i can't remember uh, so it's fine that, you can send me a text later on uh, yes, continue yes, yeah yes that neurologist in his time actually we had a unification of mind body and brain he started exploring body he started giving explanation for neurological disease and he started exploring hypnotherapy so that he can give some scientific idea about mind yes sarko sarko i remember his name sarko sarko actually tried to unite these things but again he had a student Freud. Freud took this hypnosis idea from him. Freud was a literary genius. If Freud had gone into literature, he would have uh, won at least one Nobel Prize in literature. He is such a prolific writer. He is such a good writer. But he is not a scientist. He was never a scientist. So he came into science. He became follower of Sarko. He got hooked into hypnosis, and then. his artistic brain his writing and his token addiction produce psychoanalysis a good example of how imagination derails every form of science and he created another cult initially we had to deal with descartes cult descartes cult has ended at the sarko's time and then again freudian cult started freudian cult psychoanalysis cult again this cult is still going strong so in future there is a chance that again this thing would happen but our only defense against that would be by 15 to 20 years we would get real time observation of each neuron and its inner functioning and with that there is no way pseudo science can ever take that side thank you dr bhaskar for uh, explaining all this it's always a pleasure to hear you on this passionate topic so definitely ek aap keh lein ki ek criticism aata hai jab bhi we are talking about neuroscience and psychiatry and that criticism is ke we don't know sab log kehte hain ki theek hai you have found ke ye hota hai there are molecules ye but you are unable to tell the whole story so we would not like to 
make it our clinical practice as long as you tell us the whole story. Well, there is definitely a start and then a middle thing, and then you come across the full story. But again, uh, what do you see? Uh, how do you cater the criticism of these people who say that there is no neuroscientific base? We cannot find and we shouldn't even some say that like that in that way. And actually, their opposition stems from a valid point. The valid, uh, we have to always hear these people, not because we are, we are not indebted to those people who says that I only understand psychology, I don't un understand anything else, or I, I only understand uh, sociology, I don't understand anything else, so I don't understand what you are speaking. These people are not important, but these people who are saying that what you are saying is partial, psychiatry has no basis, or dairy, psychiatry is a means for mass domination or things like that, they are at objections times from our past. In the past, we have done mistakes. We have to be direct about our mistakes because unless we say that, yes, we have done mistakes in the past, we would never be accepted wholeheartedly. There was a time, I don't know probably whether you know this part of history or not. Uh, there was a time when colectomy partial or complete colectomy was a treatment for schizophrenia in early part of 19th century because people thought that toxins from colon used to uh, cause various psychiatric symptoms. So yes, we are, we are sorry that that happened. There is also another very famous Nobel in psychiatry, the frontal lobotomy and its, its originator got Nobel. That is a dark past. We have to say that we have done a mistake. We have went overboard over many a things. In many a things, we have done a great wrong. In, psych in Russia, psychiatrists have given uh, validity to various kind of fascism. In Nazi Germany and in various Nazi outfits, psychiatrists actually gave them validity. If we talk about Holocaust, psychiatrist was one of the eager participants of Holocaust. We shouldn't have done that. We have a black history and that black history would make people question us. But neuroscience is actually bridging the gap. I'll initially, at present, neuroscience is perfectly capable of explaining anxiety and depression up to each molecular pathway. I can do that actually. Or uh, what we don't know about is psychosis and mania, the two faces of same thing. But how this thing is happening, we don't have clear about it, idea about it. Anxiety is already sorted out by neuroscience. Uh, depression is sorted out, OCD is sorted out. Uh, the OCD is not up to molecular level, but mu uh, much clear level. But mania and psychosis, we don't know how much we need to know and how much is there. That is a point, but yes, we are progressing. We have to be honest that we don't have all the answers. We are trying to get the answers. And every day we are getting new and new evidences in favor of our answer. But like everything in science, we are waiting to be proven wrong and to refine it because science is always a journey. Science is, science is not a destination. In, there is no branch of science which can reach its destination because there is no destination. The journey is science. The finding a tooth, falsify it, finding the fault in it, define the truth, again trying to find the fault. That is science. And finally, in psychiatry, we are doing science. That is what I can tell her now. Exactly, Dr. Bhaskar, that's a very valid point. Uh, the people 
uh, definitely there is a, a voice and there is a very valid voice that the research in psychiatry is hampered by DSM, the criteria of DSM and things like that. Uh, it, it doesn't help that much. It helped with the insurance companies. It helped with the social people. It helped with the uh, uh, people who wanted to treat and wanted to have over and over uh, patients over and over again for multiple of years. But it didn't help that much to psychiatric research. What are your viewpoints on DSM? Uh, is it helpful or should my we modify it? My answer would be a bit dramatic. Can you see this tattoo? Yeah, I can. I can. Let me show this tattoo. Can you see this one? Yeah, I can. This I can. Like brain and DNA. Problem is, if this is psychiatry, then DSM just become a classification of symptoms, nothing more. And that too imperfect symptoms. DSM, ICD, they are hindrance because they are saying there is a disease called depression and it has this, this, this genetic basis. It cannot be. Depression can happen due to everything in body. Brain is master organ of body. If brain is under stress for anything, a person would feel low. The person's heart rate would increase. The person's respiratory rate would increase. There would be diaphoresis, or, or that is hyperhidrosis. There would be constriction of blood vessels in skin, and that would lead to cold and clammy extremity. That person would feel there is stasis in upper GI system because aut uh, autonomic activation would cause the uh, slowing of gastric emptying, and there would be acidity and other thing. So anything that happens, anything, if you have a fever, this thing, same thing would happen. If you have, a, let's say, typhoid, same thing would happen. Malignancy, same thing would happen. If you are facing grief, same thing happen. If you are have, uh, facing a defeat in a game, same thing would happen. So how come it becomes a disease? It's not a disease. It's just a symptom. Whole DSM, initially, Till DSM-3, it was a honest attempt to classify the different symptom and finding a taxonomic basis. From DSM-3 onwards, it's a political game. People vote for their disease category. In APA, various, uh, I don't know how many of you are going, have attended APA, probably none of you. And in future, you would attend APA meetings. You would find that people are voting for their disease category. How can disease category be amenable to vote? Again, ICD is same thing. We have given name of symptoms. Yes, the naming is necessary because the insurance companies don't understand science. For them, they need a code so that they can bill against it. So. For insurance first parts, DSM ICD is okay. For people, for general people, we need to give them something that you are suffering from this, 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 and this. We should mention that this is, these are symptoms. So DSM and ICD are just names which has some function, but in when we start knowing psychiatry, these are useless and they are restrictive. They are hampering our researches. They are making, there is no genes for schizophrenia. There is no gene for bipolar because bipolar disorder is a make-believe entity. Schizophrenia is a make-believe entity. That's why gene, gene, genes for this doesn't exist. What then what are the genes for? These, these genes would have association with hallucination. Hallucination would have a lot of genetic basis. A fixed form belief or let's say Incidental memory, autobiographical memory mismatch. That is not a delusion, actually. This has a lot of genetic basis. Rumination has a lot of genetic basis. Anhedonia, feeling low, has a lot of genetic basis. Schizophrenia is just a bigger uh, exophenotype, nothing more. Same goes for bipolar and things like that. So that's how DSM 
not only is redundant, it's actually harmful. But we have to keep it as a probe till new things come, are coming. Thank you, Dr. Bhaskar, for explaining it. So uh, I guess we have been talking like for an hour now. So let's uh, wrap it up. And because it's just so amazing to hear you that it's hard to keep track of time. So <laughs> someone who is, in, who, is in who is in third year of medical school or maybe in fourth year of medical school, like the participants we have right now, most mm. of them are medical students. If someone wants to explore psychiatry or maybe clinical neuroscience, uh, would you recommend some books or maybe some writers or maybe uh, some resources that they can use and learn? Yes, I have, a, I have a folder dedicated for this very purpose, the basic psychiatry folder. I probably have sent it to you. Yeah, you have sent me back. Yeah. And uh, just uh, share this folder to everyone here. Uh, the first book should be written is Brain and Behavior. There are two books named in uh, they named as Brain and Behavior. One is Behavioral Neuroscience, another one is uh, Behavioral Neuroanatomy. Start with these two books, then go to the other books, and you would have a very good, ba a strong basis of neuroscience, neurology to understand psychiatry. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhaskar. Uh, and Dr. Bhaskar, there is a question from mm. Sheryar. He is a fourth year medical student. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, let me read it to you. Uh, I guess, it, uh, 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 yeah. Dr. Bhaskar, I agree with your viewpoint that psychiatry might just be the first chapter of neurology. Do you think if someone generally wants to explore psychiatry, he should originally pursue neuroscience and then relate it to psychiatry? Uh, I guess, uh, I don't really know uh, what he wants to ask. Shadia, can you unmute, unmute your mic and ask things directly to Kate? Yes, I would be happy. That would be, be happy. that would be better. Shadia, please unmute yourself and fire away. I would love to hear from you. Yes. Hi, Dr. Bhaskar. Thank you so much Hello. for explaining everything in uh, so much detail and in an in, um, amazing way. Uh, I was to आपने कहा कि साइकेट्री जो है वो बेसिकली एक हम उसको ये सिम्टम्स अगर हम उसको कहें कि ये कलेक्शन ऑफ सिम्टम्स है ड्यू टू अंडरलाइंग न्यूरोलॉजिकल डिसऑर्डर्स तो दिस इज अ बेटर एक्सप्लेनेशन तो मैं ये पूछना चाह रहा हूं कि अगर कोई जेन्युइनली साइकेट्री को समझना चाहता है उसको परसू करना चाहता है तो क्या उसे स्पेशलाइजेशन uh, साइकेट्री में करनी चाहिए या न्यूरोसाइंस में करनी चाहिए हां वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन I would say के first uh, तुमने जो बोला के psychiatry is science and symptom of neurological disease which is slightly different. I would say psychiatry is science and symptoms of brain disease because brain disease doesn't mean neurological disease. New, the diseases of neurology they are also actually science and symptoms of brain diseases. Na, neither psychiatry nor neurology. None of us deal with diseases only disease in whole neuropsychiatry segment is glioblastoma multiforme. Unfortunately, there is no other disease. Everything is symptom. Multiple sclerosis is a symptom. Epilepsy is a symptom. If I get chance someday, I might explain it. But today, the time limit is uh, less. So I would say everything that neurology treats is also a symptom. So neurology and psychiatry, they are just first chapter of diseases of brain. So to know them what to do, ideally develop a strong basis in neuroscience along with do either of these two specialization. Means one side, let's say you are going to psychiatry. So you are going to read a book for psychiatry and two books for neuroscience. One book of neuroscience is the comprehensive one and another book of neuroscience is the area of neuroscience which is interesting to you uh, this is one area i actually forgot to mention neuroscience has few divisions one is first large division is basic neuroscience clinical neuroscience clinical neuroscience has two two incomplete division one is neurology another one is psychiatry now basic neuroscience has cognitive neuroscience 
नंबर वन नंबर टू कॉम्पिटिशनल न्यूरो साइंस नंबर थ्री मोलिकुलर न्यूरो साइंस नंबर फोर सिस्टम्स न्यूरो साइंस नंबर फाइव इज कनेक्टोमिक न्यूरो साइंस और कनेक्टोमिक्स these are the five branches of basic neuroscience so if you want to know neuroscience i would suggest do a comprehensive book which would give you an idea about all five and ask a book which details more about the area which you like for example i am a student of molecular neuroscience i am a student and practitioner of molecular neuroscience mostly i understand molecular neuroscience Are better than other parts of neuroscience. This is the area where I work and where I research. But I have a overall general concept of neuroscience. Along with that, I am a psychiatrist and I have read neurology and psychiatry. So you start with general neuroscience, a specific psychiatry book, and when you have a understanding of general neuroscience, you would find out there is one. specific system that is becoming more appealing to you then pursue that that system and along with that psychiatry thank you so much doctor it answered it right really well thank you thank you for asking me thank you dr bhaskar it means a lot that you found this time and we had this amazing discussion i am pretty much sure ke baki logo ke bhi kafi had tak चीजें क्लियर आउट हो गई होंगी बिकॉज आई द मेन पर्पज ऑफ ऑल दिस थिंग्स वॉज टू चूज साइकट्री जो कि हमने एक वेबिनार रखा था उसका बुनियादी मकसद ये था कि वो लोग हु आर लीडिंग द फील्ड ऑफ साइकट्री दे कुड शेयर देयर एक्सपीरियंस दे कुड शेयर वट मेक्स दैम पैशनेट अबाउट दिस फील्ड एंड सो दैट पैशनेट कैन इम बाइब इन कमिंग जनरेशन ऑफ डॉक्टर्स सो इट मीन्स अलॉट डेट यू took time took time so any closing remarks or anything you would like to suggest to cover thanks up everything we have discussed thanks uh, for having me here because i love interacting with students uh, i yeah. love research dr baskar hmm. yes uh, dr baskar ye jo uh, mental illness hai isko hmm. hindustan mein mansik bimariyan bolte hain hmm. aur uh, pakistan mein jehni बीमारियां बोलते हैं तो इनका इलाज क्या तावीज से या झाड़ फूक से हो सकता है नहीं होगा बट दिस वुड बी अ वन लाइन आंसर द बेस्ट आंसर इज एज अ प्रैक्टिसनर आई हैव नोटिस्ड अ क्यूरियस थिंग फॉर 50 परसेंट ऑफ पेशेंट्स यू डोंट नीड टू प्रोवाइड एनी ट्रीटमेंट दे नीड टू सी that the air is a person sitting there who has some authority and that person is saying them that you get well this actually cures about 50% of patients of any clinical discipline not only psychiatry so if that person who is doing dua daru and tabis kabas if that person is a person of authority for the patient and a patient believes that person then for initial period of illness at least there would be some relief but after that there would be a relapse and those relapses cannot be controlled right dr bhaskar i guess you gave a lecture i guess there was a sitting on it as well the neuroscience of placebo effect i guess it yes. was like a couple of months back that was an amazing thing to hear at that time as well so i guess we should uh, wrap it up i guess i took um, the time for one hour yeah you should be can i uh, ask this a question i know we're uh, sure sure time, yes sure. yes sure, sure. This, sure. The, the, the discussion has stared into a way that this question is uh, uh, tang kar raha hai mere jo aapko pucho can i love uh, answering my students आपने अभी प्लेसिबो इफेक्ट का जिक्र किया कैन साइकोथेरेपी प्ले अ रोल इन ट्रीटिंग मेंटल इलनेसेस एज वेल यस आई विल फुल साइड विल फुल साइड क्वेश्चन इट्स द क्वेश्चन दैट शुड हैव गॉटन द बेस्ट क्वेश्चन अवार्ड फुल साइड क्वेश्चन थैंक यू सर 
Why? Because let me explain psychotherapy a bit detail. In psychotherapy, what therapy does is they systematize hope response. In human being, there are two very strong emotional response. One is hope, and the other one is fear. Both of them are mediated by different limbs of reward circuit, but they are mediated by reward circuit. And both hope and fear manipulation can do a lot of changes in human behavior. Now, what happens in psychotherapy? In psychotherapy, they do two things. Number one, they cause systematization of this hope response. The therapist starts building a therapeutic relationship. The therapist makes the person do this thing, that thing, and instill the hope and trigger the hope that I might get well. So this is the path placebo pathway actually. The genetic placebo pathway operate this area. This area is endocannabinoid system. This area is endopioid system. This area is neurotropping system. And stimulation of this pathway causes an intense feeling of pleasure and intense feeling of stability, relief, well-being. Then psychotherapy works another way. That is, psychotherapy gives some solution about trouble, some trouble the patient is facing. Let's say I am having a relationship problem, but I don't know how to solve it. The psychotherapist is giving some solutions and I am trying that those solution. Now, what happens in a brain which is depressed? The, the brain becomes hyper vigilant. It picks up every change in environment and it makes those as fear signal. Now, it, our brain has the counterproductive mechanism that is known as threat appraisal pathway or threat neutralization pathway that is being done by executive circuit. So by giving real life suggestions, by giving real life uh, examples and works, the therapist actually is boosting up that threat appraisal system and ultimately making the person less scared. So this is the, these are the two pathways that causes therapy to work. And because these two pathways are same in every therapy, every therapy produces similar effect. If you search in it, there is a uh, term associated with therapy, dodo bad effect. Every therapy ultimately produces same result. This happens due to this thing, because both therapy, whatever, uh, there are uh, almost 100 type of therapy, but oh, every therapy ultimately produces these two effects. Along with that, you would find that the explanation for psychological mindedness is based here. You, you see, we call some patients psychological mindedness. These people would respond to psychotherapy and some people would not respond. These are those people who have hyperactive placebo pathway or who are suggestible. Hyperactive placebo pathway is genetic name, neuroscientific name, in colloquial term and medical term, we call them suggestible. These people are more prone to develop beneficial effect with psychotherapy. So yes, placebo pathway has a lot of to, lot to do with psychotherapy action. And that is how psychotherapy works. That's why wonderful question. Thank you. Thank I guess, uh... If someone has any more question, he or she Please is ask. more than welcome to unmute mic and discuss. And uh, if we don't have any more questions, we would, I sir, guess, uh, yeah. Sir, I have yes. a question. Uh, sir, uh, how to understand that who is uh, will respond to psychotherapy and who won't respond to psychotherapy clinically while Clinic seeing patients? How clinically? There are ways to understand the suggestible people. Let's say a person is 
in a conversation if a person is subservient is giving control to other person easily in a con when a structure interaction is going on when a person gives another person more value than their own self when some things comes up and you suggest the person to do something that person are going to do those things that are instructed without any question these are the traits some of the traits of suggestibility and these suggestible people they are more available to psychotherapy they are also more available to nocebo effect but i am not going to nocebo effect thank you So, oh, any more questions? Audience. Any more questions? Okay. I don't so think there is any. So, I will wrap it up. Uh, Yushubai, do you have anything to say? Mm, I have something to say. <laughs> Thanks for calling me kids. I love it. Because, yes, research is a very interesting thing. Academics is what I love, but teaching my students and talking with them, interacting with them, grooming the next generation is what I love most. So thanks for having me here. And it was in wonderful interacting with you. Thank stay you so safe, much. Stay well and stay hungry for knowledge. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhaskar. It Thank means a lot. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Yeah.